Now, back in the day, when I was in the Air Force, um, we, uh, we got trained how to use the rifle, the M16 or whatever they called it, M4, I don't know, I keep changing numbers, but uh, I did pretty good. I got, a, uh, I got the expert marksmanship ribbon twice with that, but they told us that the reason that we were getting trained on the guns was because apparently the army failed to protect us at some point, I don't know if it was Korea or Vietnam, and we got overrun. So you had a bunch of Air Force guys running around with no guns and didn't know how to use them anyway, even if they had them. So, so they made a point that we all know how to use guns now. And uh, when I was doing the, we had the war games and I was in supply, I had to guard the pallets. So we had, we all had rifles. So um, that's the one time that you might be in the Air Force being a combat soldier if the base gets overrun. Other than that, the whole Air Force base was in support. And they told us the only soldiers we have as a general rule are the pilots. Because they got guns and missiles and they shoot them at the bad guys and the bad guys are shooting guns and missiles back at them. So the whole base is in support of these guys. So um, the thing we need to think about is that as we go through life as soldiers of Christ, um, there is a giant apparatus in support of us. We see Zacchaeus is having a great day. Jesus is coming and he has a conversion of heart. He's inspired by the presence of Christ. And so we need to realize that we have a big support apparatus as well. Anybody's ever seen um, that great movie? It's a, kind of a Christmas classic. It's a wonderful life. I like to make a joke, it's a wonderful movie too. But in any event, you kind of see the beginning. Uh, and You don't see stuff like this coming out of Hollywood anymore. They, they don't want anything to do with spiritual truth. They like to deal with hellish lies. But anyway, um, so in the beginning you see the, the stars in the sky and you, can, and, and you see the lights and the lights are flashing as they talk. And, 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 and all these people are praying and their prayers are going up and they're praying for George Bailey. So it's kind of a moving moment. You can hear the daughter praying, you know, please, please help my dad. Something's wrong, you know. And so when you think about it, a lot of people pray for us throughout life. Our parents, hopefully, uncles, aunts, brothers, sisters, friends, even strangers who pray for the conversion of sinners. Our guardian angel praying for us. And I think our family members who've gone before us are, are rooting for us from the, from the world beyond, you know. Um, and so scripture says we're surrounded by a, a great crowd of, of witnesses. So if we think about it as we're going through life, there's a lot of unseen, unknown spiritual support from heaven, from the angels, the saints, families, friends, and God himself. God having shed his last drop of precious blood for us, for love of us on the cross. So there's so much grace, so much love from heaven being invested in us, in support. And we're the soldiers. We got the free will. We're the ones that the enemy is shooting at. So the enemy is, of course, hell and the serpent, and they're firing lies and confusion. So hell tries to bring people, places, things, and thoughts into our path to get us away from heaven so that we go to the other place. And heaven is trying to send people, places, things, and thoughts our way to keep us on the path to heaven. And here we are in the middle with our free will walking along. So, um, so we see in the movie, you know, uh, Clarence comes along. He's sort of the, the bumbling tra in training guardian angel, which I don't think it works quite like that, but it makes the movie kind of fun and entertaining. So your guardian angel's working very hard to get you to heaven. That's his mission. That's his job. He is in support of you and your soul and your salvation. And so we need to recognize that. So, so uh, in the movie, you know, Clarence has him have a moment where he sees what life would have been like if he'd never been born. Because at the moment he's thinking about suicide and wishing he'd never been born. So he has a kind of rare glimpse 
at that and sees how his life made the world so much better and so he doesn't need to throw it away because it's a wonderful life so that's that's kind of the title of the movie so all of us need to recognize that God has put us here for a purpose the purpose of our salvation and that of our family and friends and neighbors so that's why we're here so I don't know the details of what it was but there was things happening behind the scenes in the world of the spirit pushing for Zacchaeus to recognize Jesus and change his way. So, so Jesus is coming along and everyone hears about him. You know, there's this guy going around preaching and he's, he's curing all the sick, curing the lepers, raising the dead, driving out demons, and everybody, you know, wants to meet Jesus. So Jesus, you know, is coming along and there's a crowd. So Zacchaeus climbs up the tree. He's the man in the sycamore tree. Jesus, of course, knows what's going on because he's God. So it says when Jesus reaches the place, he looks up, so that he must have been up there, high. Jesus looks up and says, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. But when they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, he's gone to stay at the house of a sinner. Now notice, Jesus didn't tell him he had to change his evil ways, you know, like the song. Um, but he does. He sees that Jesus is being attacked because, you know, of all the people in town that Jesus could go visit, why is he going to the, to the worst guy of all? This evil tax collector that rips people off. Why is he going to go there? He's going to stay with us so people are grumbling. So Zacchaeus actually is in a position now he's going to defend Jesus. That Jesus isn't making a mistake coming to his house that he's changing his evil ways. So what do we see? Zacchaeus says, he stands there and says to the Lord, and to the crowd, by the way, behold half of my possessions, Lord, I'll give to the poor. And if I've extorted anything for anyone, I will repay it four times over. Talk about a change of heart. What must have led to that great moment in his life, the day of his heart being changed? And so what does Jesus say? Today salvation has come to this house. What house? The house of his soul. A lot of times you see the word house in scripture. The man who built his house on rock. The man who built his house on sand. That's analogies. Our house ultimately is our soul. That's where we live. That's where our heart and our mind is. And so, you know, I've moved a lot in life. Let me tell you, between the military and the seminary and parishes and My first nine years of priesthood, all I did was go from parish to parish, move, move, move. So I thank God I finally have some stability here for the first time in my whole life, that I'm not moving every year. But the house is our soul, and so salvation has come to the house of Zacchaeus. And Jesus says, this man is a descendant of Abraham as well, because of his spiritual development, his heart, his conversion of ways. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. That's the mission of Jesus, to seek out what was lost. He doesn't want to die on the cross in vain. He wants to shed his blood, his precious blood, for the salvation of souls. And all the souls that he died for, he died for all of them, the hope is for everyone to gain the benefit of what he's done. Now we know that some are in trouble. You know, Scripture talks about Judas being the son of perdition and things like that. It's kind of frightening when Jesus said, better for that man had he never been born. You know, that's pretty scary when God says that about you. But Judas made a choice. It's unfortunate. And so that's the thing. We have the choice. We have support that comes to us from above. Now, my mom, a very saintly woman, I remember her saying to me before before she died, she says, I'll, I will be praying for you. And said, if you ask me, I'll, I'll try to help you get what you asked me for. And she died the next day. She was in hospice dying. And um, uh, I remember I, I recently, a few weeks ago, I was having a really bad stomach problem. And I was about to pass out. So I had the ambulance come get me. And then thank goodness they, they got the IV in me and put the Gatorade in me and the Zofran and stuff. And they kind of revived me a little bit. Then I get to the emergency room 
I figure, well, I'm going to go. I'm, I came in an ambulance. I'm going to go in to see the doctor, right? Nope. They put me in a wheelchair and stuck me in a corner of the waiting room in the emergency room. I'm sitting there for almost two hours. In fact, when I got up to use a restroom, I, brought the, I came back to my wheelchair, somebody jacked my wheelchair. It was stolen. So I was pretty ticked off, so I gave my best New Jersey angry psychopathic stare for a while, looking around trying to figure out where it went. But it, nobody was looking at me. Guilty conscience. So, yeah, they jacked my wheelchair. So, so I'm sitting there, and I thought, man, I need to get in to see the doctor because I just feel awful. My stomach was in bad shape. So I asked my mom for prayers. I said, St. Patricia, pray for us, you know. And within a minute or two, they called my name, and back I went. So I said, thanks, Mom. You can always count on Mom to help you. I always said, if I ever become Pope, I'm going to canonize my mom. See? We'll add her to the litany of saints. Saint Mom, pray for us. She'll be right in there. So, but I mean, you can pray for any saint. All you need is their name. See? Saint Joseph, pray for us. Out front, we have Saint Philomena, Saint Benedict, Saint Martin de Perez, Saint Clara of We got a bunch of saints all over the place. And hopefully, we're all going to be saints and going to heaven because we sure don't want to go to the other place. But the point is that the saints, you know, the saints in heaven are the church triumphant. The, the, the saints in purgatory, and they are saints, because if you make it to purgatory, you're going to heaven for sure. You're just going to need uh, some time to be purified. So they're the church suffering. What about us on earth? We are the church militant. Onward Christian soldier. Fighting. We're, we're fighting with what? Well, our spiritual sword, the word of God, the rosary, you know, the scriptures. What's our shield? The miraculous medal or the brown scapular? And we're at war. And so we're, we're fighting for our salvation and that of our neighbor. And again, you know, there's, there's support for us. And we need to recognize that, that, you know, God is not the only one involved in this operation. You know, we have, you have the prayers of the saints, the prayers of your neighbor and family and example and people that have looked out. And I think that on the day we die, uh, God willing to make it to heaven, God is going to show us all the prayers that were said for us by our guardian angel, by our, our family and our friends and even strangers, and all the help that he sent from heaven in our path, people, places, things, and thoughts to keep us on the path to salvation. Just like Zacchaeus here. Some good things were happening to him. He went from being, you know, the bad guy in town to the converted and healed bad guy turned good guy. So Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, for the Son of Man has come to seek and save what was lost. So Jesus has come to seek and save us. He's given us all the tools we need, all the support from heaven. It's up to us to take our free will and to say yes and to be grateful.